Hello and welcome to Military Combat Network. In today's reaction we're going to look at the United States Air Force Pararescue Team, also known as the PJs. Something I didn't know anything about, but these reaction videos are all about learning and reacting to different branches across the world. If you're new to this channel guys, consider subscribing and if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below. I always read them comments and sometimes when I do get a chance, I do reply. So what we're going to do is look at their training, some of their training. We're also going to look at their tools, tools of the trade, what they use. What is the day-to-day -day job? We're going to look at that and just have a look and react to it. Right, let's have a look at some of the physical training they do. Straight away, the most common thing across every military in the entire world, a rook march, a book standard. And is that Gatorade I can see them carry? The Americans love that stuff, honestly. When I were in Graffin, we were on a couple of exercises on that American camp. That's all they seem to drink. And here we got the famous wooden log. <laughs> honestly, every military branch video from the United States, they always seem to be training with massive logs. I haven't trained with logs like this before. Obviously, we do log races and that in the British Army, but we don't really conduct training like that with the logs. We do different types of training. So yeah, from the other training videos I've watched, they're also trained underwater. So yeah, in case the aircraft goes down or they have to rescue someone who's gone down in water, I'm guessing. Yeah, honestly, they're hard as nails. I'm not being funny. I've watched a lot of training videos and they are really robust, you know, they're highly trained from everything I've watched. And that's something I'd fail instantly on because I'm a weak swimmer. Uh, here we've got a dry drill in regards to rescuing someone. Their actual job role is to rescue people, i.e. people that have been shot or whatever or blown up. Their job is to go in there and, you know, save them and evacuate them as quickly as possible. Um, that's my understanding of the PJs. If I'm wrong, you know, um, I can only go off by what I'm reading and, you know, videos I've been watching on YouTube. Yeah, highly trained in what they do. I'm really impressed, guys, in regards, you know, the PJs. Uh, considering I've never ever heard of them. Um, one thing, let me know in the comment section, guys. Is it is it the same thing as it is in the United States or Great Britain? Uh, you know, the army's got a bit of banter going on with the navy and the air force. You know, um, people always say uh, people always seem to think we don't like each other. Is that a thing in the United States where the United States Army don't like Navy and don't like Air Force and vice versa? Let me know in the comment section, that'll be interesting. Yeah, so here we got, yeah, they actually got the injured person, you got the helicopter coming in and obviously they're rescuing him. Uh, we're gonna have a look at some of the equipment now, what they actually use for their job role. That'll be interesting. The type of medical training that we get as far as being a pararescue man is everything from the EMT basic all the way up to EMT paramedic. We are trained, whether it's day or night, to stabilize a patient, treat them, and actually get them out to a higher level of care. The medic will actually carry this seesaw rock here. On the outside, we have what we call the ABCs, and that's the airway pouch, the bleeding pouch, and the circulation. Everything from seat collars to space blankets, and extra gauze, extra bandages, to surgical kits, mini surgical kit in case we need to suture anything up, a diagnostics kit which comes with a BP cuff and a stethoscope, KTD or traction splints. We have the needles in here with everything needed to start an actual IV on the person. It's all put in this cravat here so that we can just roll it back up, put it back into our pack or in a cargo pocket and leave without leaving any trace behind. We're not just medics, we are rescue specialists. So we're carrying a wide variety of equipment depending on the scenario that we're, we're going into. Right now, I'm wearing a standard kit for CSAR, uh, Combat Search and Rescue. My body armor, I have my magazines for my weapon, my M4. Sometimes carry an M9, my sidearm. Radio to be able to talk to my team and my aircraft. Personal flotation, standard Mitch helmet, with my NVGs on it, night vision goggles, the jaws of life here, 
most local fire departments have it, but theirs is huge. Ours has to be a little bit smaller because we've got to be able to take it on the helicopter. We've got to be able to move in on foot for miles. The gear that we have has to be tailored to the mission that we've got. It's got to be light enough that we can carry it and, and move it from point A to point B. I'm prepared to take care of anything from stub toe to a multi-systems trauma patient. I can take care of him for up to 72 hours without being resupplied with this ruck. Interesting, interesting, uh, the amount of kit they carry. Are these actually special forces guys? Because I can't remember reading it. Um, please leave it in the comment section let me know. Or are they just part of special forces or how does it exactly work with the PJs in the United States Air Force? I didn't know that the United States Air Force had special forces but please leave it in the comment section let me know right the next thing we're going to do is look at some of their you know their job role within operations whilst out in afghanistan or say iraq that type of stuff the the pedros provide pr support for the uh, afghanistan aor uh, pretty much anything that's flying or we're there to cover down on uh, the 16 is our primary customer uh, we're more we're worried about them. We watch out for them quite a bit, but we cover down on every uh, CFAG asset and then our sister services as well. If anyone's out there and they need uh, need assistance, we're always ready to go. So we get the call. Uh, we already have duties delineated throughout the team. So my element leader, who's one of my PJs, takes uh, takes my guys out to the birds, gets it configured and ready to go. While myself and the team leader go up to the talk, we uh, we get the details on what's going on figure out how we're going to execute the mission. Once that's done, we come downstairs, grab all our stuff, head to the aircraft, brief my team on what's going on, what the situation is, so everyone has that say on what's going on, and then we get on the aircraft and, you know, execute whatever we need to do. All right, so the HU-60 is pretty much the, uh, the Black Hawk from the Army. We took it, made an Air Force variant, and it's our, our primary aircraft in the Air Force for personal recovery. We have uh, two of their special mission aviators, so on both sides, they're manning the guns. They have a quite a depth responsibility, so they're doing everything from power calculations to making sure the uh, PJs are informed and that their gear is ready to go as well. As far as uh, my role as a pilot, uh, obviously I'm on the, on the sticks most of the time, but I also have my co pilots doing that. I'm mostly doing mission managing, coordination with other assets, and then uh, terminal area, uh, talking to the survivor. got five PJs that I work with, and they're extraordinary at the job, and they're going to be the ones that, they're going to be the ones that bring someone home. Being able to multitask, I'd say, is one of the hardest things to do just because you're having to do multiple things. Worry about survivor, worry about the team, worry about the threat, worry about getting picked up or not getting picked up. If you got to move, where you got to move to, um, you know, injuries sustained. There's a lot of things that come into, you know, the actual mission that you're doing. Yeah, you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes. You know, I, I hope that uh, if it's my worst day, it's not my last day. And that's what we're out there to do for everyone else. Make sure that their worst day isn't their last one. Right guys, so I'm going to finish you off here. I wanted to put a little bit of combat footage in here, but a lot of people got a little bit uh, upset about my last video in regards to special forces, i.e. Spesnads, um, in regards to me putting combat footage at the end. People, you know, some people like it, some people don't. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to put it in here. But if you guys could let me know in the comment section, are the PJs actually special forces or they're attached to special forces or their special forces pararescue um, I can't remember I did read about them the other day but I can't remember for the you know for the love of me but yeah also another thing I'd like to point out in regards you know I don't know much about the PJs I only know what I read and looked at and a lot of the footage I've looked at you know they're very much trained like firemen if that makes sense i don't want to put disrespect to the pjs or firemen or you know hopefully no one gets upset about it but to me they seem to like yeah search and rescue they are search and rescue and they, t they train a lot you know like firemen you know cutting people out of vehicles um you know getting people from like you know rescue people basically yeah but guys if you enjoyed this reaction video please give a, a thumbs up and I will do another reaction pretty soon within the next few days. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.